Hi, my name is Miss Sasha, and I'm a teaching artist in the PACE Art Program. We integrate the arts with the classroom curriculum. I'll be working with you all year long through these videos. We're going to explore lots of different subjects throughout the year. You'll recognize some of the things you're learning with your teacher, but we'll be learning about them through visual arts or creative movement. You might be watching today from your classroom, or maybe you're watching from your home. We're coming to you today thanks to the Acadiana Center for the Arts and the Lafayette Parish School System. You can find these videos anytime through the Lafayette Parish School System website or the Acadiana Center for the Arts YouTube channel. My name is Miss Sasha. I'm a visual artist. A visual artist is someone involved in the arts of painting, drawing, sculpting, and photography, and much more. Visual arts means using your vision or your eyes. Your eyes are for seeing. You use your eyes to look at art, which is visual art. We use lines, shapes, and colors to make art. Today, we're going to make some amazing robots using lines, shapes, and colors. If you joined me last week, we went over six important lines used to draw. Today, we're going to review those and add shapes and colors to our art piece. Everybody's robot is gonna look very different. The supplies we will use today is two sheets of white paper and an assortment of colored crayons, including black, and your creative imagination. Now is a good time to pause your video and collect your supplies. Now that you've gathered all of your supplies, let's build a robot. All right, I have my piece of paper here and I have a black crayon. That's what we're gonna use to get started. Um, let's first talk about what is a robot. A robot is an automatically operated machine that replaces a human. It doesn't replace all humans, it just replaces some humans. Um, it performs functions or tasks just like a human. What is a function? What is a task? It's little things that we need to do or that your robot needs to do to complete a task. Like um, if you needed your robot to draw a picture for you, you could have a robot do that. Robots are used for assembling things, putting things together, adding packets of material, staple, stapling them. They're used for packaging. They might, you might have a robot that packages all of your Amazon packages, puts the bubble wrap in, tapes the top of the box. Robots are used for driving. They're used for cooking. They might mix your cake batter. They fix things, so they might um, put a tire on a car. They're used for split space exploration. So they might um, be able to drive a rope. The robot might drive on say Mars or Venus to get pictures to share with us here on earth. Um, have you ever seen a drone? A drone is a robot, but a drone is um, operated by humans. So it's kind of like a remote control car. Um, a drone is, is flies in the sky, unlike a remote control car. You can also have a remote control boat that you use to control. Um, let's see, robots come in all shapes and sizes and colors. We're gonna have lots of choices today when we draw our robot. Um, I don't want yours to look like mine and I don't want yours to look like your neighbors. Okay, let's get our crayon and get ready. Um, I have lots of different things up here are options for us to look at. I have options for our body. Our body can be a square, a circle, or a triangle. Same for the head. And here's our lines that we talked about last week. Here's a straight line, a partial zigzag line, a curve line. Over here I have legs that are wavy or wiggly, zigzag, and straight. So we're gonna start in the middle of our paper. If you can get your black crayon and put a dot right in the middle, right in the middle of this picture, okay? You got that? Perfect, that's our starting point for our robot. This is gonna be our practice paper. So if you have your other paper, you can put it next to yours and we can practice our shapes, okay? Um, the body of the robot might have switches screens, controls, sensors, wires, cables, all kinds of stuff is on the body of the robot. This is the part that tells the, the head and the arms and the legs what to do, or even the eyes, or maybe their little 
pinchers, who knows? I don't know. So over here, let's practice drawing a few different body shapes. We don't wanna make them too big. We're gonna use this um, for a couple of different things. Here's our square. A square is four straight lines. Pretty simple. You can try it again. If you want to try another one next to it, you can. Four straight lines. They're all the same length. If yours aren't the same length today, that's okay. I know you're just learning. All right. When we go to make our robot's body on our paper, we don't wanna make it really, really tiny. This is too tiny. We want our robot to fill our page. So our robot's body is gonna be in the center. If you wanna practice drawing a circle, I start at the top, top and I go around. Whoops, my crayon broke, happens all the time. Look, here's a circle. You can do a circle inside of a circle. If your circle turns out to be an oval, it's gonna be okay. We're gonna practice this all year long, okay? How about a triangle? I did my triangle upside down. It works better for his body, but if you wanna do it right side up, you can. You start at the top, two straight lines, and you close it up at the bottom. If you wanna do it upside down like mine, you do a straight line at the top, and you have a meat at the bottom in the middle. So you can practice this a couple times. Again, you can do triangles inside of triangles. You can do little bitty ones, but when we draw them on our paper, we're gonna do them nice and big. Okay, let's try it. I have a couple of different bodies here. Now, I don't want you to draw the fancy things on the inside. We're gonna do that in a minute. Let's go ahead, this is a square. This one's a circle. This is a triangle. If you want to make an oval for a body, you can. There's my oval body. So there's a different choices. If you wanna make a rectangle, you can do that too, if you know what a rectangle is. So let's go ahead and uh, pick one. You pick one, here's the middle. We wanna do our body in the middle. I think I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a circle this time. Nice and big, it kinda looks like that's his belly button, but it's really not. Maybe it's one of his controls, right? All right, if you want to go ahead and add some switches, some controls, some dials, some wires, some sensors, some cables, whatever you want on the inside of your circle, you can go ahead and do that. I've given you some ideas and I have one right here. Look at this guy. Here's a circle like mine. Here's some other choices. Here's a square, if you chose a square. Let's see, let's fit it over here. And here's a triangle. So you have all kinds of choices. I'm gonna add a square inside of my circle. Maybe that's the screen, watch. And maybe I have a zigzag in my screen. What kind of line do you have in yours? Could be straight, curved, wavy. How about, um, I'm gonna add some buttons. How do my buttons look? Pretty good. You can add some more later. We're gonna get started on another important part of our robot. I've also added a ton of examples, some that kids did, some that computers did, Maybe a robot drew this robot, I don't know. Look at this one. This one has straight lines, super cute. All right, so our face or our head, right? We have the same choices for our head that goes on our robots, right above our robot's body. So when we draw your robot's face, I want you to think about what emotions your robot feels. Emotions, um, emotions are feelings like being happy, sad, mad, or scared. So when you, you feel emotions because of the things that you see or that you hear or that you remember, things that you do, maybe an emotion that you remember is a dream. Maybe you had a scary dream, so your face would be like scared, right? 
Um, if you're sad, maybe you lost your favorite pet, your emotion would be a frowny face or some tears, right? Your arms might be sad like this, right? If you're scared, you might shake. Those are all, all emotions, right? Your feelings, right? If you're happy, maybe you got something really cool for your birthday and you're like, yay, I'm really happy, right? So we're gonna make some faces. Maybe turn to the neighbor near you and make a sad face. Maybe do your arms like you're sad. Maybe you're embarrassed, right? Maybe you're mad. You can't go outside to play. You're mad, you're angry, right? So different lines are for different emotions, right? So a zigzag line might be for an angry face. Look at, he's kind of angry, right? He's kind of maybe nervous. Maybe he's a nervous robot. Maybe he's surprised, ah! Look, his arms are up, ah! Right, so he would be a surprise robot. All of these robots have different faces and I want yours to have a different face too, okay? So you pick your head shape and draw it above your robot. Maybe you wanna have a neck. A neck would be two straight lines. This guy has a neck, this guy has a neck, this one has a neck, right? And maybe on the top of my neck, I'm gonna have a square head. There is my robot's head. Go ahead and add your neck and add your head. Be thinking about your emotion, right? Let's see, I have not done a zigzag head, a zigzag face, so maybe I'll do my emotion. My emotion on this robot will be, um, actually, I'm gonna do a curved line. Watch, his face is gonna be curved. He's a happy robot. He's having a great time doing his robot art, so he is super happy, right? And he needs some big old eyes. Look at all these different eyes. You can have square eyes, circle eyes. Ooh, I kind of like this one, watch. This is a circle. And then around it is a big circle, like he's got crazy glasses on. Remember, he's happy, okay? What emotion does your robot have? Maybe you could turn to your neighbor and do another face and let them guess what face you're doing. Which one am I doing? It's my angry face. Angry Miss Sasha. <laughs> a straight line might be a nervous face, right? We talked about that. This is a thick nervous face, right? We did it two times. Look, if you want your line to be thicker, you can draw another line. Look how happy my robot looks. He needs a nose though. I'm gonna give him a nose, right? Um, on top of your robot's head, you can do his like little antlers or his um, sensors, maybe another type of sensor. Maybe on the side of his head, let's see. Let me borrow one. Ooh, ooh, look at this one. This one's a zigzag with a dot at the end. These are like his little antennas. And then you might have something on the top of your robot too. Watch this. How's that? He's actually starting to look pretty silly, isn't he? All right. So these are all emotions. So our arms are also part of your emotions because it shows your body language, right? If your arms are folded, you might be upset. If your arms are up in the air, you might be excited. Maybe you just won a game or you were able to go swimming and you, you did your best time ever and you put your arms up. Straight down might be nervous or shy, right? So when you go to do your arms, you might wanna do your arms either down or up. It doesn't matter to me right? But you can use a line. Look, here's your arms, straight, zigzag, or curved. I'm going to do my, I'm going to do one arm up in a rectangle, but I'm going to make two straight lines and then I'm going to make it thick. Look, thick, right? And at the end, I'm going to put some big old hands and I'm going to put some little fingers. How's that for hands? My guy's just so happy, he can't stand it. Look, his arms are up in the air, his face is smiling, he's got his crazy zigzag ears on, right? Let's see, are we ready to do our, our little, well, you know what, at the end of hands, I wanted to show you this too. Um, your hands have grippers or suction cups, scissors, spinners, they might be able to lift heavy objects. 
They might be able to tighten little tiny screws or hold things. So those hands are very different. Look, where is my, let's see. Oh, look, let me pull this down. So we missed those faces, huh? Look at those silly faces. There's legs, whoops, let me get to hands. Here we go, there's hands. Look, they have different little pinchers on them. Different little things coming off the edges, right? Maybe they're on this side. Your both sides don't have to be the same. Maybe this guy has these little spikes on this side and on this side he has little bumps, right? Look, how's that? Okay. So now that we have arms and we've added a bunch of really cool things to it, what else could you add to your arms to make them um, show your emotions even more? Or how would you hold your arms? Maybe if your arms were like this, you were like getting ready to start a race. Or if your arms were like this, maybe you are wanting someone to maybe pick you up or hold you. Maybe you need some help. Maybe you're sad, right? Or excited. Maybe you saw your grandparents you haven't seen in a while. I'm gonna give you some time to go ahead and add a few things to your arms, just like I did on mine. Pinchers fingers, buttons, stripes, elbows, right? If you need to practice drawing some straight lines, curve lines, wavy, that's all good. You can always go back and add a few things to the parts that we already have. We'll do our legs in a minute. I'm gonna give you some time to add to it. All right, I'm gonna add a few little lines to my body here. He's looking kind of like he needs a little extra. Look. All right. Oh, I was gonna show you how to add another arm here. Let's see, if you don't already have arms and you might be stumped for ideas, you could do a wavy arm, look. <clears throat> These are silly arms, huh? Whoa. These have little fingers, right? Maybe some stripes. Maybe if your neighbor's having a hard time adding something to them, you can give them a little helpful hint. So I wanna go back while you're adding some things to your um, artwork is that when you are feeling these feelings and you are having these emotions and you are, um, you know, realizing what they are. This is all called self-awareness. So when you are aware of your emotions and you can identify what's making you feel sad or mad or happy, those are all, that's called self-awareness. That means you're being aware of yourself and knowing how you can either help somebody to not be sad or help somebody to not be angry or give them some options. Maybe they, you can teach them how to breathe or to take a deep breath and you can help somebody that is um, hurting or is angry or sad. And that's all called self-awareness, okay? So when you're feeling in yourself, you're helping yourself, self-awareness. All right, let's go ahead. It's time to add some legs. And I'm gonna put my legs right back up here. Here we go. All right, look at these legs. These legs have some choices over here too. They're straight zigzag and wavy. But on this paper, I did um, I did a, a partial zigzag, I did curved lines, and I did straight here. So I'm gonna do, um, hmm, I'm gonna do another zigzag, but I'm gonna add an extra zig and a zag to it, watch. 
okay? That's a thin line. So I wanna go ahead and make it a little bit thicker because those are the little skinny legs. We wanna thicken them up, right? They're used for holding things and moving things and moving things around. So if their legs aren't strong, well, then it might fall down. So our legs and our feet, they're used in a robot, they're used for walking, rolling, balancing things, for jumping, right? All right, I'm gonna make mine thick. Uh, let's put some wheels on this guy, watch. He's a rolly robot. Okay. All right, can you help me out? Maybe I need to put something on there. Maybe, maybe I'll put some stripes. I like stripes. You could put some buttons, right? Maybe he's fast as lightning and he has a little lightning on his feet. So I want you to choose one of these legs or another one that you see here and add that to your robot's body. All right, which one should I do? These are thin, look. Remember I talked about thin legs, but he's got lots of extra stuff on it. I'm gonna do straight legs because I have a straight arm. All right, what kind of feet do you think I should do? Uh, I'm gonna do some squares. Whoa, it's kind of a rectangle. That's okay though, look, I'm gonna add to this one, make two rectangles, put a stripe. Now they look the same. I need to add some fancy stuff to them though, right? Let's do some curve lines, like his little knees. Look, this robot has knees. What about some buttons? What about some buttons on this side and some dials on this side? I'm gonna put an X in the middle of these. Maybe you could turn to your neighbor and see if they need any, any help. You can give them some suggestions, right? Now, <clears throat> some people, um, I wanted to tell y'all this, some people have robotic legs or arms right? If they've been in an accident or they've been injured, then um, a doctor will help them to build a robotic arm. And if maybe they've gotten to an accident or they were born without a leg, then they, the doctors will help them to make a leg so they can still walk and they can still pick up things, right? And those are robotic arms and legs. And so they'll even have like um, Olympics that have just people that are missing an arm or a leg so they can compete with groups of people that are just like themselves, okay? So, how are you doing with your robot? Is there anything else you wanna to add to your robot? All right, I'm gonna add, let's see, what do I like on this robot over here? I'm going to add some extra um, little buttons on this side and this side. All right. So now let's go ahead on our robot. Let's give them some earth to stand on or cement or ground. We're gonna make a horizon line. We're gonna go across our page, but look, I'm not gonna draw on my robot. I'm gonna go to the other side, all right? Let me move this for you. All right, so now there's a ground and there's a, a, a sky and an earth or a wall and a floor, okay? So now we have our horizon line goes across our page. Okay. We good? All right, so you can go ahead now and get your crayons and you can start adding color to your robot. You can color your background, you can color your ground, you can color every different part of your robot. I'm gonna grab my crayon. Okay, here we go. Watch this. If we don't finish coloring it today, 
then of course you can finish it later. It's kind of like a color book page, right? Remember all the cool things we talked about? We talked about our feelings and being aware of ourselves and why we're feeling a certain way. I bet it, some, some of you might have been scared to go to school on your first day of kindergarten, right? So you might have been sad and that would be, um, that would be an emotion or a feeling, right? And the more you go to kindergarten, the less scared you are. And then you have great teachers that help you along the way and show you where to go around school. So those are all feelings and emotions, right? Happy, sad, angry, silly. Oh man, I bet y'all have silly all the time. That's what kindergartners do. There's my ground. You can go ahead and continue to add to your ground. All right. I'm gonna do my background with this pink. I can kind of go right over that black. If you have thin black lines, you can go right over that. All the way around. If you want to color your robot, you can do that. I'm going to move this one out of the way. I bet you're much better at coloring than I am. Looks like I forgot a part of my green down here. No problem. Okay. Almost done on my background. If it's taking you longer, it's not a big deal, right? You can do it later. I'm sure you might have some free time later in your class where you can add to it. Looks pretty good though, huh? All righty. Um, we're gonna color a few more little things. I'm gonna do some orange. I like to do as many colors as I, as I can. I like my robot to be bright and beautiful, but you know, some robots are, look at all these robots. They're pretty colorful. Right, we're using our imagination. So it's okay to be creative and pick as many colors as you can. Some robots might just be like silver because they're metal or uh, copper, right? Maybe there's golden robots. I don't know. Here we go. How's that? How you looking? All righty. Well, I hope you enjoy drawing your robot with me. I hope that you can be able to finish coloring it up. And now you can see that you can do your robots in all kinds of different ways, right? You can have triangles for heads, circles, squares. You might even find a new shape that I don't even know about, okay? So when you get another piece of paper or even turn over your um, paper for practicing, you can um, practice drawing some of these other robots. I'm sure your teacher can show you some other examples that I've used and you can practice drawing some new ones and be sure to send us a cool picture of your finished robots. Thank you for joining me today. We learned so many things. We learned about lines. We learned about shapes. We learned about putting shapes inside of shapes. We learned how to make our lines thick or thin and we also learned all about self-awareness. As you go through your week, I want you to try to notice some different lines and shapes around your classroom. Maybe you can find some thick lines or some thin lines. Maybe you can find shapes inside of shapes. And maybe you can be aware of yourself and how you're feeling. Enjoy the rest of your day and I can't wait to see you next week.